Hi there. Can we talk about Kakapos? I realize that seven episodes in and I have yet to do a burp. And while there are many options to choose from, such as the murder bird cassowary, to the murder bird shrike, to the murder bird butcher bird, to the skewer that harasses other birds until they puke and then eats that puke, I decided I wanted to stick with my original MO of the series and take a look at one of the weirder birds in the exciting world of ornithology. Best known for its not for safe work encounter with famed zoologist Mark Collardine and residing in New Zealand at almost two feet tall, cockapoes are the largest parrot in the world. Now I know when we hear the word parrot we tend to think of the pirate one, but believe it or not there are a lot more parrots out there besides the better known macaw family, 390 to be exact. So what makes a cockapo a parrot? The scientific family of parrots is called the Cytocene and are best identified by their hooked beaks and zygodactyl toes, that means two in the front and two in the back. They're also unique among parrots because, unlike the rest of their sit and scene cousins, the cockapo cannot fly. At eight pounds, the cockapo by bird standards is a fat fuck. I'm not fat shaming him, very literally, this bird has more fat on its body than the average parrot. This weight, plus its proportionately small wings, prevent it from flying. Instead, the cockapo will use its zygodactyl feet to climb trees and use its wing for balance and to help it safely land after it jumps down from the trees. While most of us understand the concept of flightless birds, it's important to explain the evolutionary and environmental reasonings behind this animal being flightless. See, with the exception of three bats and marine mammals limited to the ocean, New Zealand originally had no mammals on its island. As often the case with islands with lots of food and no major land-dwelling predators, flightless birds are pretty common, filling in the ecological niche that mammals would normally have. Along with being flightless, the kakapo has many traits putting it apart from the rest of its parrot family. It has one of the best senses of smell out of any parrots, it's nocturnal, and it's the only parrot that engages in lek. To put it simply, Lek is a form of sexual selection that's sort of like one of those video game dating sims, with many males competing for the female's attention. While lek is not uncommon among birds, the cockapo's lek is pretty elaborate given that this species only breeds about once every five years. The male cockapo digs a small bowl-shaped hole in the ground and makes a mating noise called a booming in hopes of attracting a female. Should a female wander by, the male will dance with her in hopes of winning her over. Unlike the majority of pairs that are monogamous and mate for life, the life of a cockapo is a hookup culture, with the female making some sort of excuse about having work early the next morning, and the male continuing to stay in his bowl and boom for another period of four months. Like you might have guessed if you're a frequent viewer of the series, I tend to talk about two big things of the animals I cover, fucking and the conservation status of the animal in question. GMO, I gotta bring politics into this, I just wanna look at animal pictures. Well, here's the harsh reality, and I'm not going to put it as nicely as some of my personal heroes in the world of animal education have. We have really fucked up the environment. I mean, maybe not you personally, but centuries and centuries of doing what we wanted with any animal and environment we stumbled across, and even current bullshit like trying to repeal the Endangered Species Act, have damaged animals more than we can imagine. You might not care if one insect goes extinct, but if you've played Jenga, you understand that in the long run, this has consequences we cannot undo. The kakapo is a great example of this because its natural evolution was perfect for an island with no mammal predators. Its main predators were birds of prey and staying still and hiding on the ground in nighttime was a really effective means of staying alive. This did not work so well when humans started to show up on New Zealand and colonize it and bring dogs, which hunted the land, had a good sense of smell, and rats, which loved to eat eggs, or the mystilidae, which New Zealand settlers intentionally brought onto the island and let loose to hunt the rabbits that they'd brought into the island to let loose. Yeah, New Zealand sort of has a problem with this. The change in the predators the kakapo had to be on the lookout for, plus the already very slow reproduction rate in these birds, rapidly decreased the kakapo's population. I think young children tend to think animals go in danger due to extreme hunting or poaching, and while this is true in some species, another big part of animal endangerment and extinction is merely a byproduct of deforestation, pollution, or the introduction of invasive animals into an environment where the animal was in an unfair advantage with no way to defend itself or its offsprings. 
the well-known dodo bird is very similar to the kakapo in that regard, a large flightless bird that was helpless in the face of aggressive dogs and egg-eating rats. With their numbers in the wild under 200, the kakapos are literally on the verge of extinction. And through a lot of hard work, cooperation, and devotion from conservationists, they might manage to survive. But in general, the protection and restoration of all critical species is a group effort. It takes a mass movement to get laws into effect that can protect and help these animals. And it takes the gigantic effort of making countless people actually give a shit about an animal they might have not ever even heard of. Things like documentaries. And, um, Mark Carradine getting dry humped by one. Yeah, he said, hi. Sorry. <laughs> one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> That's all for today. Thanks for letting me talk about cockapos. 